from Microbe TV. This is Q&A with A and V. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and joining me tonight from Chevy Chase, Maryland, Amy Rosenfeld. Hello, Amy. Hello, Vincent. How are you today? Reasonably well. What does reasonably well mean? Um, there's, there's nothing... Uh, at the moment that's causing consternation. How about that? <laughs> Isn't okay. that good? How about you? How are you tonight? You're the only one who would know. Uh. I did a, a twiv with uh, David Quammen today. That was a lot of fun, a special midweek twiv. And uh, we will do another one on Friday. So this cool. one will drop on October 23rd because I will be away next week and the week after and the week after that. So I have to do some juggling with TWIVs. But welcome everyone to your Wednesday evening corner of virology. And uh, I want to thank our mods for being here. We have Les, we have Tom, we have Frank, we have Steph, and we have Vanity Nutrition. Everybody's here tonight. Thanks for coming back. And we have uh, almost 200 people. Give us a like before we start. And uh, that helps uh, people find us. Every night when I come here, Amy, I wonder if anyone will come. Not every night, but Wednesday night. What if you and I show up and there's like just moderators here? <laughs> it would be funny. I guess we'll have a, we'll have a very uh, personalized conversation. Yeah, I suppose so. All right, let's Okay, get to, I guess not. Uh, no, no, we would continue. I think if anyone shows up, we'll continue. Absolutely. Uh, and you and I could chat, actually, right? We could just talk for an hour and record it. That would be fun. Be like sure. a podcast. Actually, we started a minute late because Amy and I were engrossed in chatting, right? Yeah. I don't know. What were we talking about? vaccines or something you would oh we talk about lab stuff so amy runs a lab and i don't anymore so she tells me things that are going on to make me feel engaged and vicariously experiencing research right amy yes <laughs> okie dokie let's go to the comments twiv was mentioned yesterday during a literary zoom at the cornwall library in western connecticut couldn't believe it. We were talking about audience professors said, listening to TWIF. Wonderful. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, our, our reach grows, right, every day. We passed 114,000 subscribers on YouTube. I hit 150,000 followers on Twitter. That's pretty cool. And I don't go there very much, so that's kind of neat. It's good to have a reach. Pete was in Stockholm last week. And that's why he missed the stream. He did visit the Nobel Museum the day before the 2022 announcement. So only 21 winners had center place. Yeah, I went to visit that uh, in 2019 when I went with Erling Norby. That was a lot of fun. And I guess this is, oh, this is a continuation. Listening to Twiv, he feels like a scientist too, the professor. Excellent. Good to hear it. I like this. So Philip said, you know, he's going to go to bed because he's gutted. I like that, that that expression, I'm gutted, I'm going to sleep. We don't use that in the U.S., right, Amy? No. How, are you gutted tonight? What does that mean, tired? Tired, yeah. Exhausted. Uh, yeah, I'm tired. And you haven't eaten dinner, right? No. Why don't you go make yourself something and eat it in front of the stream? Furrowed, furrowed brow. <laughs> what? Okay. Bad idea. Bad idea. Peter uh, tested positive last Tuesday, but he had a plan, had Paxlovid in three hours. Rough few days, though. Good. I'm glad you had a plan. That's the way to do it. And also David Quammen had um, it tested positive like last week or something. He had some mild symptoms, but he didn't take Paxlovid. 
Polio Pete says, based on offer, the bivalent is not as good as the monovalent. And we have no idea how safe it's going to be. So why the hell has it been authorized and recommended? We don't know. We don't have data on the bivalent. That was his problem. We don't have data to compare them, right? And we're no longer going to be able to compare them because you can't get a monovalent booster anymore. So you can only get it as a primary series. So we can't do that experiment. That's what Offit was lamenting. And Polio P continues, this is how you make rational, non-conspiratorial individuals distrust the FDA, CDC, and Big Pharma. Well, for, from my point of view, and Amy, you don't have to say anything. Now that Amy works at the FDA, I trust the FDA more. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about true. that? That is true. That's no, what my mom says. And now, but the, but Mamie would say, but Vincent, I don't make any decisions yet. <laughs> so, my mom says uh, she trusts the FDA more. So today, the FDA approved what bivalent for five to eleven year olds, right? Yes, so but only Pfizer. Only Moderna. Pfizer. They didn't. Yeah. So they, they didn't apply or something. It's not done yet. They haven't discussed it yet. I guess. I see. So. Um, now everybody can get a bivalent booster, right? Five years and up, correct? Yeah, but that's not everybody. Everybody would be six months and up. Okay. That's why I said five years and up. Everyone five years and older can get a bivalent booster, in the U.S. anyway, right? Well, the FDA only regulates in the U.S., right? They do. <laughs> they do. Wayne says, I turn 60, 70 next month. You and I are of similar age. Yes, indeed. You're a bit older than I, just a few months. Mm-hmm. Happy birthday in advance. Uh, Laura said this. Uh, Hello, Laura. This PharmD has been sick all week for negative rats. There are other viruses out there. Absolutely. I, I How did you know it was a virus? Uh, what else could it be? Bacteria? Yeah, <laughs> but less, much less likely. Viruses are all the rage these days, Amy. Don't you know that? Okay. What? Yeah, bacteria can cause uh, respiratory diseases. That's for sure. That's for sure. The UK Vaccine Committee has been much more conservative with children's vaccinations. So what did they decide, Pete? Pete? Oh, here we go. The autumn booster is currently only for over 65s, then only over 50s to follow. I think that's a reasonable recommendation. That's more in line with Paul Offit's idea, right? I don't know that over 65, the elderly, elderly. Paul said it's over 75, according to Rachel Wolensky. That's okay. the. I'm not over. By the way, Amy, I am not elderly, elderly. Who Did said you, know? you were? Yeah, I can do the maths, Nakams. I know how old you is. I'm, I am not, <laughs> but I, when I will be, when I am elderly, elderly, I will okay. announce it here on the live stream. Oh, we'll groovy. Probably... Uh, groovy. Should we get out some balloons and a cake and stuff? People don't use the word groovy anymore. <laughs> but I do like it. I think it's very cute. <laughs> groovy. <laughs> groovy. It's like the 60s stuff. Okay, Frank says, news came out the past week that Pfizer said viral transmission was not tested. But I do believe you said it first that these vaccines were to prevent illness and death. Yeah, they were never tested for transmission at all. They weren't even tested for infection, just any kind of COVID. Although later on, that was in the initial testing for, that led to the EUA. But later on, they did try and look at infection. No, I think I think other, I don't think the companies did. I think the Israelis did, and then that's screwed right. it up. That's right. As someone from Israel, don't don't you feel badly about that? Not from Israel. No, I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and no, if you screw just, it up, you screw it up. But what culturally, you? you're kind of from Israel, right? It all comes from there, no? No. Well, we all come from Africa, snuckums. But. Um, but if you screw it up, you screw it up. There's, what do you want me to say? 
You didn't screw it up. That wouldn't be the truth. They screwed no, it up. No, usually you were, um, you, you're not, you, you don't pull punches. If something's screwed up, you, you say it, but you also do not say it's screwed up if it's not screwed up, right? Right. They had a 50 50 chance of screwing it up, and they chose to do the 50 chance. Yeah. And screwed it up. End of discussion. Patricia's in D.C. She says it's a glorious night. Do you have a glorious night in Chevy Chase? Yeah, it's good. Uh, glorious would be like a nice temperature, no wind, um, I clear, don't think there's clear skies. Any, I don't think that there's any wind, but I can tell you. At my house, it is now 66 degrees and cloudy. Rainy conditions are expected tomorrow. Chance of rain, 80%. Yes, yeah, you're going to need to bring here, the yeah. umbrella up. Going to need the umbrella. So Michael is fully vaccinated, got my bivalent three weeks ago. I have been dealing with post-nasal drip for three weeks. Is that a cause for concern? I hope it's not COVID infection. It's, you know, these are, this is an association. It's hard to know. Uh, many people have post-nasal drip. Did you have it before the, the bivalent? Um, I, I'm, I wouldn't worry, but it should go away. <laughs> I'd be a great doctor. Don't worry. It'll go away. <laughs> no different She's, than my friend's sister, who's a doctor. She says it'll be fine. No, she's, she was a, she's a neurologist and she used to work in the ER and somebody came and complained about like their migraine and she basically told them to take some aspirin and to stop complaining. And then she followed it up with, well, you're my migraine and I'm telling you to go away. <laughs> she was not particular. She did not particularly have a good bedside banner. Give us a report next week, Michael. Okay. Uh, any thoughts on the sub sub variant soup of Omicron? Here, I have a um, a thing up here. Let's sc screen share. So here is covariance.org, right? And if you scroll down here, you see Omicron BA1, two, four. So let's click on BA2 because we have um, here the here the lineages BA2, two one, two two, two two one, two three, etc. So you know, these are rising in, everything's going down now, right? But, you know, the, the, these uh, sub-lineages are rising. In fact, we could look at uh, the numbers again. Let's go back to BA2. Yeah, most common countries for BA2, UK 30, Germany 13, US 11%. So they're, you know, they're slowly increasing, but they haven't dominated yet. And, you know, they have other other changes. Um, WHO says, in fact, let's let's look, BA 2.2. WHO has a report out. Here we go. Statement on sublineage BA 2. I guess everyone can see that, right? Nope. It's a little, it's a little off. There we go. Uh, they track variants. This is from February, though. But they said at the time, you know, BA2 differs, has some amino acid differences. They say it has a growth advantage. I don't know. I haven't seen those data. And then they say it's inherently more transmissible, which is BS, because there are no experiments that show that. Um, BA2 are increasing in proportion relative to others. Mm -hmm. So um, it, they're increasing, and this is what's going to happen. Uh, but nothing really concerning as far as I can see. What about you, Amy? Do you see anything concerning there? About what? BA2 and, and et cetera. Is there anything concerning about them? Or is it nothing to see? Move on. Exactly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Are there tests that measure the health of patients' immune system and are predictive of a protective response induced by a vaccine regardless of age? No. But that would be great if we did, right? But we don't. And I don't know I don't know how long it's gonna be before we have such tests. How can you what would you look for, Amy, right? It'd be very hard to do. Because it's so involved, the immune system has many uh, tendrils. <laughs> Besides 
B cells and T cells and NK cells and macrophages and dendritic cells, all the cytokines and interleukins. Oh, it's very complicated. It's not clear what you would look at. So no, Kang, unfortunately. It would be nice. But no. Well, you're not even factoring the pathogen. Yeah. Yes, I know. But what's your point, Dr. R. Rosenfeld? How someone responds is not solely well, based on their so genetics. The pa- right. It's the, pa- the, it's the pathogen, too. Like pathogens can, and antigens can skew your response towards TH17s and TH follicular cells and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, yeah. I don't know what this question, uh, this statement of what's your point means. I mean, seriously. I don't get it. I wouldn't have pointed, I wouldn't have said it if it wasn't important. Okay. Just mark 15, 16 minutes in, Amy gets annoyed with Vincent. I'm not annoyed. Don't judge me. I don't think there's a judgment. I'm just assessing you. Yes, your it's, 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 it's judgment. I'm not annoyed. Okay. But that's, a, that, that's not nice. Well, you say you don't understand my comment. It was just, uh, now I forgot my comment, so let's move on. The CBR stands for Center for Biologics Evaluation and Research. Yes, Amy does research, but she also has regulatory duties, right? Mm-hmm. The CBR is actually yes. the part of the FDA that looks at all the results and just and then I don't know what they do with them, but so they discuss when, them. So Amy, when a company has a clinical trial and they give uh, FDA the results, they go to CBR, right? Well, it depends on what the thing is. Well, let's say a vaccine, right? We go to CBER. Well, oh, yeah, but like a drug and a monoclonal go someplace else. They don't right. go to CBER. But then the committee looks at the data and they provide a recommendation to... to well, people, uh, re- people like review it and they write up a summary or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then they discuss it at a committee and then it goes to a professional reviewer. And then they discuss it at a committee and they make a recommendation. To the management of FDA. Yes, to the management of FDA. <laughs> like, yes. like Peter Marks, right? Who's the head? <laughs> Is Peter <laughs> Marks the, the head of, F- of, uh, of CBER? CBER. Yeah. And then does he get the re- recommendation? Then he passes it up to FDA head? Oh, they all come from no, Peter Marks' office, No, they all come right? from Peter Marks' office. All right. And so someday you will participate in these deliberations, right? In theory, yes. <laughs> Are you going to get out? You're going to try and get out of it? <laughs> you wouldn't do no. that, would you? No, but, you know, everybody has a different task. Like, uh, you sit on different committees. Not all of them are review committees like that. Some of them are committees outside the FDA, like for the WHO or the CDC mm-hmm. or okay. or SAGE or something or other, you know, it's all different. Okay. Um, if Okay, Polio Pete says, if you two, meaning you and I, Dr. Rosenfeld, okay? Okay. If you were at risk for a high, severe disease death, would you get the bivalent booster right now? If I was at severe disease, like obesity and hypertension and over 75, yeah, I probably would get the bivalent. But then again, I have one foot already in the grave because I'm obese, hypertension, diabetic, and over 75. So I already have one foot in the grave, so, you know. So why not just push yourself there? Is that what you're saying? Well... No need to and no need to expedite it, right? I I would. I'm not. I have. I'm under seventy, and I have no comorbidities whatsoever. Right, but that's not the question. The question is, if I had comorbidities. Oh yes. When I get then it, I would. I think even though there there are very little data saying it would help, it would be a tough call. Okay. Be tough. I would rather take a chance and get Paxlovid right away. And then someone could say, well, what are you, what are you scared about with the bivalent booster? I'm not scared about anything. It's just in principle, I think we should use vaccines that are supported by data. That's all. 
It's the same thing that pull off it says. Uh, was the bivalent studied as a third booster? You know, is this studied as a second booster, right, Amy? What was the study population? I don't know, but it's studied as a booster. It has to be the third booster because you and I got the first booster, so we got three shots. Then there was a booster this past spring that you and I decided not to take, so this is the third booster. Okay, so those probably the people who got uh, the bivalent in the trial had already two boosters, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, Leem says, given that all I can find human viruses that spread fecally orally are non-enveloped, do you think it's a prudent rule of thumb to use soap, not alcohol rub, when dealing with patients with gastro? Yeah, because alcohol rub is not going to cut it for polio, right? Well... We're normal. But soap isn't going to cut it for polio. Well, then what would? Well, I mean, we use alcohol to decontaminate. We use 70% alcohol to decontaminate, not soap. I thought you used bleach. Some bleach, but like if there's a small, if there's a small spill, you use 70%. You use bleach to maybe inactivate. Here's a paper from 1985. And? I'm going to share it here because it's quite interesting. Here's the title. An experimental study of on the epidemiology of enteros, water and soap washing of polio, contaminated hands, its effectiveness in kinetics. Hans Eggers. Wow, I remember him. So uh, the, it was studied by analysis. Soap and water washing for five minutes reduced the number of infectious particles by two to four logs of 10. Polio binding to skin was reversible. Removal of virus followed a tri-exponential decline curve. And washing agents more effective than soap were sand, aluminum hydroxide powder, and buffer alone, suggesting that friction was more important than emulsification. Well, that would be true because there's no lipid to emulsify. So I think washing with soap and water for five minutes actually is physically removing the virus. It may not inactivate it. Yes, it's, it's physically removing so the virus. I think that's what you should do because ethanol, you're never going to do five minutes of washing with ethanol, right? You, could, you put it on no. and, and it evaporates. So lean soap and water, yeah. That was good. Uh, viral transmission not tested in fires. Is that a big deal? No, it's not a big deal at all. All you need to test for is disease, preventing disease. Transmission is not. Well, no vaccine prevents transmission, so what's yeah. the problem? No problem. Doreen says, thank you so much for your contribution, Doreen. Very much appreciated. October 6, UCSF Grand Rounds. Michael Peluso discusses possible long COVID mechanisms, including growing body of evidence of persistent viral proteins and gut tissue exosomes in the plasma. Thoughts? I don't think much of this persistent viral proteins in the gut and exosomes in the plasma. Do you, Amy? There's always exosomes in the plasma. Yeah, but containing SARS-CoV-2 proteins, for example? Oh, no, I don't. I don't, I don't I'm not buying it. We don't think that during, we don't think the data are very strong that uh, there's persistent viral infection. Not, I mean, it may turn out to be better in the in the future, but right now it's pretty weak, in my opinion. So I, I don't think much of that. Polio P wants to know if the flu vaccine is completely useless in a year that they get the virus selection wrong. Completely useless is harsh. There, there, it is not completely useless. No, there is an in, there is a substantial increase in serious disease. Yes, and hospitalization, but not. It's not uh, zero effectiveness. Yeah, I mean, that would depend on the year also to tell you the exact number. 
Amy Rugala. Now, Rugala in Italian, arugula, but what's Rugala? What is it? Let's look it up. No, I didn't mean arugula. And but the the, the Jewish pastry is rugala, right? Right, Amy. Rugala, rugala. Maybe it's, it's rug. It's rugala. It's rugala. Anyway. What do you mean? No, no way. What that I'm old or what? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, just followed you on Twitter. No way that we have all those followers. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, thank you, Amy. Hey, look at it. it's Amy. Amy, it's great. It's great. Amy is in the house. Sam asks, is there increased risk to people with autoimmune conditions on or slash on immune altering meds with these latest variants, more hospitalizations? No. It's just, no, there, there's no more hospitalizations, no. Uh, if you are have immune, autoimmune conditions or immune altering meds, you have to make sure that you're ready with a plan with monoclonals or Paxlovid, right? Because the vaccine may not give you good protection, but it has nothing to do with the variant, right? Any SARS-CoV-2 would have the same effect. Would would you agree with that? Uh, sure. I mean, my parents have immune deficiencies and were infected and were fine. No Paxlovid, just vaccination. Jonathan says he's here. I'm people and Stacy's here too. I, we didn't mean to imply that there's no one here tonight. There are actually a nice number of people here tonight. But I have to admit that I wonder if someday no one will come. But I, I know you you folks that are here now, you 400 of you, you're like the core that have been here a while and you like it. You like the community. You like talking to Amy. And so I think you'll come back as long as we keep doing it. Apparently, it's a leafy herb related to rocket. Okay, rucola. Got it. All right, well, here's another one for you. What's a rusk? A what? You know, a rusk. Some kind of a sweet. A hard, dry biscuit or twice-baked bread. Oh, rusks. Melba toast and biscotti. That's what they, so rusks is what they call them in Sweden because I'm reading uh, Wallinger and that's what he calls them. Rusks. It's good to have leisure time for free reading. On the, on the platform of the train when, when I'm waiting for the train I can't do anything else, Dr. Rosenfeld. It's good. Or when I'm lying in bed and I'm you know, I crawl in for five minutes till I fall asleep, I read. It's good. Uh, do you think we will see the NOPV2 given to stamp out CVDPV2? It's for you, Amy. I know. I got it. Do I think NOPV2 is going to stamp out vaccine-derived Sabin2? Yeah. Yep. Uh I think that's uh, that's what they think. I'm not sure that that's what's going to happen. Although there does seem to be a reduction of vaccine-derived sabin circulating, but it could replace it, right? Yeah, I think. But I mean, the capsids are the same. I believe. Uh, I think yeah, NOPV2 right. capsid is the same as Sabin capsid. So I don't know why you would think, so I don't know what makes vaccine derived polio type two then because it's defined by the capsid, right? So if it's based off of the capsid, so basically what you're saying is that you're just going to see less um, of the non-structural alterations that are non-structural proteins that are altered in Sabin. Okay. But there are other problems. Yeah, like recombination. Yes. So they're giving more and more NOPV2 globally, right? So no. we'll see. We'll see. No, what do you mean no? There's no, there's, uh, as far as I know, there's, uh, there's a problem making it. It's hard to make. And I don't believe that it's being distributed. 
It says here outside of the to, trial. According to CDC, NOPV is being used to respond to polio outbreaks with low risk for generating new circulating strains. That's not true. Because, well, I guess that might be true. I shouldn't say that that's not true. That was a little hasty. Because it was not used for the recent type 2 outbreaks. And it was definitely, since we don't have NOPV2, NOPV1 or 3, it was definitely not used for the wild type or the type 3 outbreak in Israel and Africa. So and understand- actually, so when the CDC sp- spokesperson spoke about it and somebody asked her she said that there was no plans to distribute NOPV2 currently in the US yes yeah i agree with that that's that's a good plan but i think if there's an outbreak in africa asia they will there's not in. enough they go in with opv monovalent opv2 cuz there's not enough NOPV2 but according to the official documents it says could say whatever they want, but as far as I know, there there is a manufacturing process problem. See, uh, it is uh, it's being deployed to enable this I'm rapid not field clear. ability. I'm not clear that it's actually been deployed. Hmm. Well, but it's, a lot of doses have been given out. We we saw they that were a today. clinical trial. They were a trial. They were part of the trial. Oh, okay. I believe. Isn't that what the MWR, MMWR and Lancet papers were about was the last part of the clinical trial? I think it was deployment in outbreak situations, and they were just monitoring. Oh, maybe. The, the maybe I misunderstood. Reversion, reversion but I, my understanding is they're deployed in an outbreak situation. Well, the last time I heard, we were having manufacturing problems. Okay. Maybe no, what I, I heard, heard was too long ago. Okay. Well, I could be wrong. Maybe what I heard was too long ago. But anyway, the capsid is based off of Sabin. So Sabin capsid will continue to circulate, and the internal region then recombines and stuff or reverts. Yeah, I think it would be hard for it to replace VC, VD, PV2. But we both could be wrong. We'll see, Vax man. It's a good question. Um, or bivalent. Well, vac- so that's so that so that is what the the on message point is. However, before they they before they like in 2019, there were only two cases of vaccine derived VAP. Mm-hmm. Now there's 500. Or there was five, a thousand, and now there's five hundred. So, not clear. Well, Aiden O'Leary says they're going down again. So, well, yes, because he compared the wrong numbers, and that's what I'm saying is his comparison is not correct because prior to all of this, there were two cases. Yeah, I understand. It's gone up a lot. I think part of the reason so, is that there was no, there was less vaccination during COVID, right? Uh, yeah, but I, I think that they went up prior to that, prior to the pandemic. Okay. I think they started to go up prior to the pandemic. Well, this is clearly a situation we're going to be following, given our interests in enteroviruses, so stay tuned. Oh, we're interested in enteros? I've been interested in enteros since I was five. How? No, that's okay. a bit much. Since I was... 29 years old, worked with David okay. Baltimore. Okay, we're interested in interest. All right. And Jennifer says, are the bivalent vaccines actually preventing any illness? Anecdotally, I'm hearing people who are getting COVID even with the new vaccine boost. All right, so Jennifer, first, are they preventing illness? We don't have data yet. I haven't seen any. Have you seen any data, uh, Amy? No. I, I don't and then... You say people are getting COVID. What do you mean by that? Are they testing positive for SARS-CoV-2? Are they getting a mild illness? Anyway, I, I don't really trust anecdotal data like that. It's just too unreliable. Okay. But we supposedly will have some numbers soon. We'll see. I've been told that Pfizer has data. <laughs> what kind of data? I don't know. 
Billy Bob says, gutted is upset. Oh, okay. I thought it meant tired. Oh, gutted means he's disappointed he can't watch live. I said, I thought he was tired. Thank you for cor correcting my improper definition of gutted. So, Amy, if you're gutted at the reviews of your paper, then you're sad about them or you're upset about them, okay? Okay. Got it? Okay. Uh, David says, would it be a good investment to build an army of robot zoologists, virologists that filled the globe and get data on all types of data? The goal would be to take a census of all forms of life. No. I think this would be very invasive and potentially destructive. So uh, I don't think it would be a good idea. And, you know, you know, we always we often think of trying to find out all the viruses that are out there. And Eddie Holmes said, by the time you learned, they would all have changed from when you started because the RNA viruses in particular reproduce so quickly that they change. So he doesn't think it's such a cataloging uh, expedition is worthwhile. What do you think about that, Amy? You like that? I'm never for cataloging. Didn't you collect stamps as a young person? No. Okay, but you do collect flour, different types of flour. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're so laconic sometimes. Yes, I guess so. <laughs> but no, I don't collect stuff. Okay, do I? Yes. All right, Les gives us the link for two of 639 with uh, Erling Norby. That's what I... So that's part two when he came to visit New York. And part one was earlier. I went there in Sweden, and he took me to see the Nobel Museum. Uh, it was pretty cool. And I'm trying to think if we had to pay to get in. I remember. You would think that Erling could get in, right? I think we did pay. Uh, Jonathan has a joke. Have you heard the joke about the guy who fell down a well? He couldn't see that well. <laughs> Amy's not laughing, Jonathan. I did. I appreciated it. Do you, do you have a joke, Amy? No. Yeah, uh, Kat says, Amy, I feel horrible that you haven't eaten yet. It's so okay. it, Amy doesn't eat before the live stream. She hasn't for two and a half years. No. And when she was in New York, she would finish at 10, go to... No, actually, she would finish at 9, do her plaque assay, which would bring her to 10, 10.30, then go home and get home at 11, and then think about eating, right? Yeah. At least she's home now. See, she can get home at a reasonable hour. When Amy smiles, the world smiles. That's right. So it's people cute. like when you smile. Smile, Amy. It's good. Can you smile? <laughs> uh, Twiv tw 564 Virology Nobels with Erling Norby. Good episode. Yeah. Philip is still here. I meant gutted to miss the live stream. I'm going to have to watch more now. Oh, so sorry to misinterpret. Gutted. I thought gutted meant tired. Isn't there a, a UK expression for being tired? Knackered, right? There it is. Knackered. <laughs> That's what I was thinking of. Knackered. Uh, let's see. We do know now that the bivalent makes one generate a more diverse set of antibodies. Probably a good thing, but the paper is still in peer review. That's the thing, Tom. I don't know if it's a good thing. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, Carol says, my daughter attends UCSD, majoring in molecular biology. Her professor, Dr. Tor, recommended to watch TWIV. I was elated. Excellent. You know, Carol, you're getting your money's worth there, <laughs> right? Your tuition dollars are being well spent. Good for you, Dr. Tor. I hope your daughter enjoys it. Wouldn't it be sad if, you know, the mom likes Twiv, but daughter says, nah, ma, it's not interesting to me. That would be sad. But Amy tells me it's too long for young kids. So we have to get young, shorter versions for young kids. How about the unknown vaccine, Novavax? I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that. Is it being distributed? I guess so, Amy, right? I guess. Let's look it up. 
July in July the EUA was um, um, issued, and apparently there's not much use in the U.S., but it is being distributed in other countries. All right, a big global market awaits. So, did you know that uh, the company Novavax is a small Maryland biotech, Amy? Yes, I've passed it. Is, is this is this it here? I'm going to show you. Is that it? Uh, I don't know. That's not the that's not the campus that I passed. It says Alexandria there. Is it? Is there one in Virginia? That's Virginia. Hmm. It says here. Uh, the delays will severely impact the vaccine's uptake in the U.S. So it, that's the story that it's going to be used overseas mostly. I think if you wanted it, you might be able to get it. It's not true, Amy. If you said, I want Novavax, could you get it in the U.S.? I guess so. I don't know. You have to ask Daniel. Let's I don't know if I don't and know if pharmacy if physicians are carrying it. Can I get Novavax in the U.S.? Apparently, you can. Where Novavax is available, you can look it up. And uh, may not be near you, but you can find some in the U.S. Good. Okay. Thank you, Vax Man. Hello, H Zoo. Nice to see you. Thank you for your support of science education at Microbe TV. I had three shots of Moderna. Had mild COVID six months ago. Shall I wait a little longer to get another shot? Don't really need another shot. I don't think you need another shot. You look young, and you, uh, unless you have unknown comor comorbidities that are unknown to us, you should be good with three shots and an infection. I don't think you need anything more. Thank you for your support, H. Sue. Ian wants to know, winter prediction and advice. Prediction of what? I guess COVID. That's what we're here for, right? No, it How says, it says, come with your virus questions. It doesn't say come with COVID. Okay, Ian, I would say um, we're going to have winter respiratory viruses circulating in, in the winter here in the northern hemisphere because winter is starting we're going to have an uptick in uh infections influenza rhinoviruses uh respiratory syncytial sars-cov-2 and most people are going to be fine because uh, most people are vaccinated or infected uh, someone on the train platform said to me yesterday that their significant other is a pulmonologist and they're seeing an uptick in admissions to the ICU for respiratory illness. And I don't think that's, uh, that's surprising because that's what happens in the winter. You get an uptick in respiratory illnesses. Advice? No, no advice. Just live your life as you would otherwise, I think. Right, Amy? Sure. I believe this was asked to you before. If you could meet any scientist at any time, who would it be and why? What do you think, Amy? Is there a scientist that you would like to meet? Uh, probably. I mean, there are various people I'd like to meet. It's not just one. Well, give us an idea of one. Um, I think Rosalind Franklin would be interesting to meet. I knew you were going to say that. How interesting. I also think Cajal would be interesting to meet. Ramon E. Cajal? Mm -hmm. The neuroscientist? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How would I like to meet? Well, I always used to say I wanted to meet Einstein, and then people said, Vincent, he doesn't care about viruses. He would find your conversation you know? boring. That's what people know? say to me. They get me 
Sad well, how do you I... know? How do you know what he would think? Can I name more than one? Sure. So I would like to meet Einstein, Pasteur, and Darwin. Because I think they would all. Louis or Marie? Louis, Louis Pasteur. I don't want to meet Marie Curie because I'll get radioactive poisoning. Just kidding. Who else would I like to meet? I've met, I've been a lot of. Yeah, those three would be interesting, I think. But let me think some more. It's a good question. We can bring back Groovy here at TWIV. Hey, Amy, are you Groovy tonight? Sure. Sure. So Lori had Novavax. Are they doing boosters? No. I think that's funny. That's very funny. Are they doing boosters? They're not doing boosters? Not yet. Why? I don't believe that they have put in for a booster. So it's, it's a one-dose thing? How many doses do you get of uh, Novavax? Two? I think so. So at the time in the U.S., right, no boosters of Novavax. But however, what did w I just say? However, the WHO says that uh, you can get a booster of Novavax. So if you're in other countries... You can get a Novavax booster. There you go. But not in the U.S. Uh, what are the main principles to making a vaccine? Well, when we figure it out, we'll let you know. Oh, Dr. Rosenfeld, we, we've made some very good vaccines. Don't don't be negative like that. We figured It's not negative. They're out. all imperial. They have all been made imperially. Empirically. Yes. So... There, when you figure out of uh, when you figure out the main principles, then you can just plug and chug. And at this point, we cannot do that. I'm gonna, at the risk of annoying Amy, I'm gonna say some principles. Okay, first you. Need well, to, then why would you do this? Can I just, as I would teach in my course, and you you don't say in my course oh. I, I can't do this. Okay. I didn't realize that this was an extension of your course. Okay, fine. Maron, Maron, Maron for uh, no Maron for me because there's no point. Whatever. I think I there are principles. We can disagree on whether there are principles. Or right, not. you are right, and then I get yelled at because you're always wrong, and I point out that you're wrong, and then I have to have like five years of people complaining about that I'm snippy and I don't want to be here, and that I'm not nice to you, and then you call up and say I'm not nice to you. Okay, so let's go through this whole rigor morale so I can no, no, enjoy no, no. this weekend doing this all, all doing Amy, this all chill, over again. Chill. I'm not saying you're wrong. I just want to tell you what I think are principles, okay? You can say there, there are, are none, no and principles. I have no problem with that. Principles are first. Principles, how do you make a vaccine? You identify a medical need. Then you have to say, what antigen do I need to induce the immunity? Do you want an infectious vaccine or, or a non-infectious vaccine? You have to figure out which ones work in animal models, and then you go into people. Those are the main steps. I would call them steps, not principles. Principle is you you got you have to identify an antigen or more multiple antigens that confers immunity to disease, right? That's the principle. But as Amy says, there's no plug and play. There's no vector that we can put the antigen in and make a vaccine. We don't have that. You yet. can't even pick out the antigen. Can't even pick out the energy. You have to do it empirically. I agree with you, but I still can call them principles of some kind. That's all. Nifty uses Groovy. Oh, that's cool. So Amy usually uses, I, I hear her from time to time. This tonight, Groovy, I haven't heard Groovy in a long time. Yeah. Bring back Groovy. It's so funny. Sam sees Twiv mentioned more and more around the webs. So That's great. Th I think this is good. You know, I've been plugging away f since 20, 2008 on Twiv, and I figure just slow and steady, and we build up listeners, and the more listeners, the more we'll hear, and you get bigger and bigger and bigger, and at some point we're big. 
When I do you find the find big? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Oh, okay. Um, it's a good question. When when do you define big? I don't know. When I don't everybody, know. you know, like NPR is big, CNN is big. Everybody knows CNN, right? That's big. But yeah. Well, we know the letters. How many people actually watch? You know NPR, but how many people actually listen? No, well, that, that's known, right? It's known, but anyway. Yeah, but I'm sure that mo I'm sure that there are way more people that recognize CNN logo and NPR as letters than actually listen. Okay, but let's say we get to the point where people recognize the TWIV logo. That's big. Or. Uh, well, I mean, you guys walk down the street and people recognize you. No, it, it never happens. I walk past you on the street and you don't even recognize me. Oh, that was you? I was incognito. <laughs> <laughs> I was incognito. Uh, no, nobody recognizes. Someone asked me that yesterday. I said, no, I, I, nobody recognizes me. It's fine. But. Maybe that's a measure of big, but I think a measure of big is when people are talking about it all the time. Did you hear that on TWIV? I don't know if we'll ever get that big in my lifetime, but I hope it gets there at some point. I'm sure it does. I mean, it already has, right? I think you got built... written up in the Bloomberg thingy at the beginning of the of like the top ten podcasts or something or other. What was that thingy? Oh, the thingy? The, the guy wrote an article and. He, the article was like 10 things I'm jealous of during this past uh, pandemic year. And one of them was TWIV. That's really so. great. That's that's one sign of getting big, right? But yeah, more of that would be fun. Did you hear at coffee shops? Did you hear what they said on TWIV? Or maybe they play it at coffee shops, right? You know, years ago. Do they is, play music at coffee shops? I don't know. I haven't been to a coffee shop in a, in a long time. But well, the last one I went to was in Manchester, and, and they weren't playing any music. Okay, I don't Which know. I good. only go to coffee shops on the on the drive to New Jersey, so whatever that highway is. But I once, stop. I go to the restroom, and I get a peach latte, and then I progress onwards. So when I was before pandemic era, some listener wrote in and said they heard. At a Starbucks, they were playing it. Oh, it was during the 2009 influenza pandemic. They heard in a Starbucks them playing TWIV uh, on the PA system. Well, that's, that's cool. cool. That's very cool. <laughs> so should we have you being played at, at the Target, the Costco? I don't think people are going to listen. They play Muzak to get people to shop. Wow. Well, apparently... Paul Offit mentions Twiv all the time. He mentioned Twiv in his talk to Bryn Mayer. Yeah, and also um, Malcolm he Gladwell. Posts all, he, po he posts it all the time on the, on the vaccine website. Come and see Paul on Twiv. Paul's on another episode of Twiv. What, the, the, the CHOP website? Oh, the vaccine organization. What is it called? Whatever his vaccine thing he is. Let's look it up. By the way, um, he's got his own website. Did you know? PaulOffit.com? Wow. He's a company? <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> I have to show this. This is pretty cool. So this is uh, PaulOffit.com. He's got a thing called Recent Podcasts. This Week in Virology, Omicron Boosters. Yeah, he tweeted it, too. Then he has he uh, NPR. And he's got Z-Dog, Brian Kirby. I don't really like this setup, do you? Brian Kirby. It's not my style, but keep going. MedPage Today, NPR. Oh, another TWIV, 21. Look at that. Radio Lab. Cool. Um... Also, Malcolm Gladwell mentions TWIV. He appears to like TWIV. So. What about the guy who, the Daft Punk guy that we're supposed to be having on? What? What's Daft Punk? 
you talking, you're talking about the guy debunk the, the guy. funk yeah that guy yeah wilson uh, yeah there's another one yeah many people like us well when's they, he coming they, on uh, I, it, it's it's on my list i got a couple of people this week already i'm gonna work on it so aj this, this thinks snookums is funny what is snookums anyway term of infection term of endearment especially facetiously aha now i know that amy is being facetious not always <laughs> uh vanity says my molecular lab prof said if we come to halloween class in a science themed costume we get extra quiz points i'm thinking about being a crispr cas9 I think you ought to do some virus thing. I think she should be a polio virus. Yeah, be a virus. You can put a full body costume and have your arms sticking out of it. Well, the arms could be the receptor. Yeah. Yeah. And the legs could be the receptor. Coming out of the f canyon, right? Yeah. Mm hmm. See? Cool costume right there. So Tom says, Groovy, indeed, some of us are age appropriate for that expression. There were songs, yeah. Songs with the with Groovy in the name. Songs with Groovy. Let's see if we well, can. Well, that was way before my time. Groovy kind of love. Before my time. Feeling Groovy, Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah. Not even a genre I like. Does anyone like Joni Mitchell? Do you do you like Joni Mitchell? No, but Wetmer loves Joni Mitchell. I, I very and much. Joan like... Baez. Wetmer loves Joan Baez and Joni Mitchell. I also liked. Um, who's the other folk singer who she lives in New York City? Carly uh, Simon. No folk, folk singer in New York City. Uh, Edie Brickell. Oh, I actually like Edie Brickell a lot, but that's not who I'm thinking of. Jo not Joan Baez, but another, she had long hair. Uh, was there, someone knows who. Not Joni Mitchell is is good, but some uh, chat people. Um, chat people. <laughs> she was a folk singer, long brunette hair, lives in New York City. Not Carol King. Not Joan Baez, um, but someone and else. Not Carly Simon. Not Carly Simon. I wouldn't say she's a folk singer anyway, but not her. Oh. Why did you like Natalie Merchant, Edie Brickell? I love all of them, actually. Natalie Merchant is fabulous. Judy Collins, that's who it is. I loved Judy Collins, yeah. Absolutely. Judy Collins and Joni Mitchell, but all these others you mentioned too, uh, I liked as well. Isn't Judy Edie Collins yeah. is Paul Simon's wife. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, I like I liked uh, Joni Mitchell. They paved paradise and put up a parking lot. What a great song! And you know, it always runs through my head, almost on a daily basis. Um, another one of her songs. Um, uh, who knows where the time goes? Who knows where the time goes? Who knows where the time goes? It's so bloody good. Lara Nero is another good one. Sandy Denny. Yeah, Suzanne Vega. Am I right that Suzanne Vega was a Columbia student? Yes. Okay, back to science. Uh, is there a benefit to waiting the full six months until getting the bivalent booster as opposed to the earliest time of two to three months? Risk to interrupting the maturation process. Confused, last shot was July 1. According to John Wary, no. John Wary at UPenn says it doesn't matter? Right. So two to three months is fine? Yep. Okay, so Sam, this is important because someone has actually looked at this. So you don't need to wait the six months for this one. Okay. But the one that would be beneficial to be six months would be the first booster, right, Amy? Mm-hmm. 
So, Sam, go for it. Oh, here's a good one. I like this. So Doreen says, I dig, I dig that. I dig it is another expression. So groovy. I dig it. Do you ever say I dig it, Amy? No. I don't, I don't dig it. I don't say I dig it, but I like the expression. I use, I overuse cool. I overuse it. I, f I find myself saying it all the time. Have any of the variants demonstrated enhanced disease? No. No. Although you can find people who will answer your question, yes, Paul, for sure. But in our opinion, none of the studies are conclusive. And um, there have been a problem because, you know, people get, let's say back in the Delta days, they would get, Infected and oh, if it weren't Delta, I wouldn't have gotten sick, right? No, you. Would. In fact, in my opinion, the original OG SARS-CoV-2 would behave the same way, except for say resistance to monoclonal antibodies. And so, I was thinking this on the way home on the train tonight, Amy. So, number one. So David Kwame was talking a little bit about how sequencing identified the alpha variant coming out of South Africa, going to Kent and then moving to London, right? And I'm thinking, you know, okay, that's all well and good, but how do you know the OG SARS-CoV-2 wouldn't have done the same thing? Because the UK had just started to open up, all these susceptibles are out there, boom, they get infected. The original would have done the same thing, in my opinion. Don't know otherwise, there's no proof. Would you agree with that, Amy? Yeah, I think I I wouldn't. I think his point is is irrelevant because, or it's not even COVID specific. I mean, we use sequencing and it demonstrated it demonstrated Sabin type two circulation throughout the world, right? Yeah. Went from Israel to London to New York. Okay. Yeah, that's a, that's so, a, that's a value. So for like. Us. Yeah, so like it's not a SARS-CoV-2 principle. It just happened that the, that is, if we had the technology when s polio was circulating rampantly, we would have done the same thing. So just came at the right time with the technology. We just didn't have it before. And so now we're going to do it up the wazoo for everything else. Is, isn't this a good reason? Isn't, shouldn't we be using sequencing to, tra to trace polio in the sewers in the U.S.? Well, it's just RNA, right? It's not infectious RNA. virus. So, okay, but just to know it's there. We don't even know where it is. And well, yeah, but I'm just saying, sequencing. I'm just saying that now we do it up the wazoo. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, he would so, say that it revolutionized. I, I'm not clear what his point, well, I'm not clear what his point was because <laughs> you, it's like a kid, right? You give a kid a toy and they play with it forever and ever for the first 15 minutes of it, right? Well, I need to take it to bed, Mom. I need to do this. But, I need but look, to do that. You right? have to see his viewpoint. What he did is he spoke to the genomics people, and they said this was a revolution, and he bought it. Right? That's He's, fine. And he I thinks, have a I have a swamp for him to buy. Which swamp? The Great Jersey Swamp. Yes, the Great Jersey Swamp. <laughs> okay. I'm selling it. <laughs> Patricia sure. says, CDC says they're no longer officially recommending that staff in medical facilities mask. Did you know this, Amy? No, but when I said something a few weeks ago, everybody, including you, bit my head off. So i like, not surprised, but okay. Your head's still there. It's missing a part. <laughs> okay. So you're okay with this not masking? I do you mask for flu? Do you mask for rhino? Do you mask for polio? No, we don't. Do you mask for pseudomonas? No. Nope. Staff strap? Look, I don't know all the procedures in hospitals. It may be in certain areas you do mask. If anyone knows, you know, like ICU or something, do you have to mask routinely? I don't know. You I do don't not. know. 
Okay, Paul Offit says that short incubation viruses can't lead to sterilization with vaccines, but long can. Amy mentioned in the past that Paul was not right. Is Paul wrong and why? Yes. He's wrong? Yes. So what, what is the correct? There's no such thing as a sterilizing vaccine. Right. So that's one, 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 one issue. Mm -hmm. There's no such, right. And there are many acute infections that have a viremic phase that lead to long-term, let's say this sterilization, or let's say long-term memory response is equivalent to sterilization, even though it's not. Because there's actually no such thing as a sterilizing immune response. But nonetheless, let's say long-term memory T cell and B cell response equals sterilization. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if your virus is short or long incubation. It only matters if there's a viremic phase. So he's not correct. So I think the, the acute infection not being able to stop is correct, right? For sure, because it's over in so quick a time, you don't even have time for the memory response to, to halt it. But he's saying maybe in a longer infection you you might be able. But no, you're right. You can't even make a sterilizing. There's no such thing as a one. sterilizing yeah. immune. There's right. no such thing as natural sterilizing immunity. So it's unfortunate that we don't understand that, and that we've used this word, and now it's a key. It's a hot topic. So Amy, I got an email the other day from someone who said, so we had criticized the cardiologist for being all excited about, you know, an intranasal vaccine as potentially sterilizing, right? Because we pointed out there's no so, there's no sterilizing vaccine. And someone wrote in and said, yes, but can't he suggest that it might be possible? No. And I, uh, to which I would say, Amy would say, you're incredibly arrogant to say that, right? Yes. He cannot suggest it. Because you can't outdo nature? Right. He's not that smart. Anyway, I thought you might like to know that. I do. But if you noticed, I sent you and Daniel a Lancet paper that talked about the inefficiency of a, of a mucosal-based nasal vaccine. Yeah, they're not very good. Maybe we could do despite better, Despite a right? certain person, yeah, it's a, a, despite, despite a certain person at a certain university in Connecticut. Yeah, uh, we don't need to be to be snippy we don't need to insult i'm not snippy i'm not insulting her i'm just saying say what they think might be possible even though they're wrong no no because it's intentional it's one thing to make a mistake Uh, it's another thing to intentionally lead people down the wrong path I, i got it i understand what you're saying but let me ask it to another way amy let's say Someone came to you and said, here, I have $100 million. I want you to work on a a potential sterilizing vaccine. Would you say it's never going to work? Or would you say, okay, I will take the money and try it at least? Or would you say, no, it doesn't work? I would say that that immunity to natural infection is not sterilizing. So we we can discuss what you mean by sterilization and what the goal is because de- generating something that's sterilizing is not a it's not a goal that's going to be achievable and then i'm just stealing your money okay that's fair enough uh, last year there was an episode of twiv talking about a super antigenic sequence in the spike similar to toxic shock syndrome in kawasaki did anything further come of that no I haven't seen anything about it. What was the guy's name and the lady's Moisha. name? Moisha. Moisha Arditi, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's also the one who told me how HPV was a sterilizing a vaccine. Is, is he the guy who said that? Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. Uh, Mark says, vaccines prevent disease, not infection. The measles vaccine, mumps, you don't see any measles or mumps. Are they still getting measles or mumps infections? They're Presum- abortive of infections, yes. We, we presumably, but we don't check, so we can't show you the data, right? No. 
do you think it would be worth looking at microglia response or possible relationship to viral infection in long COVID or ME? I'd be surprised if someone hasn't already. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you can look at microglial functions, right? You can do all kinds of... Well, they're macrophages of the... Uh, they're like macrophages of... The brain. Of that brain, yeah. Hey, all these things are very likely being looked at, Laurie. I don't know which one will bear fruit, of course. What do you think of the Florida Health Department study that is said to show that in males 18 to 39, COVID vaccine caused increase in cardiac-related deaths? I don't, I've never seen the study. No, I haven't seen it. Surgeon and I, I find it very hard to believe that only in Florida was there an increase cause of cardiac deaths in males 38 through 18 through 39 that if there was an increase in that you would have seen it all over the country didn't just happen in florida i uh i think that was the perfect point that it can't be state specific right i i see no such data anywhere <laughs> state else. specific maybe it was day specific maybe it only occurred on tuesday january 14th i don't know no sorry sally it's, it's just not credible ian wants to know a good book for understanding trials clinical trials match propensity etc i don't know of any do you amy so here we go. Put out the, the feelers on our on our Q and A. Does anyone know the um, a good book on understanding clinical trials? I know they're out there. I, I absolutely know they're out there, but it's not something that I ever pursued. Maybe there's a book called Clinical Trials for Dummies. No, we don't want that. Speak well, there's, there, is, there is a book called Fundamentals of Clinical Trials. Okay. There are a whole bunch of them. Textbook of Clinical Trials. That one's kind of old. Clinical Trials, so? Study Design. Oh, there are a ton of them. Fundamentals of Clinical Trials, Principles and Practices of Clinical Research. A ton of them. So I don't know which one would be good, Ian, but there are a ton of them out there. Okay. Here's a polio question. What's your opinion about polio in Brazil? They're saying it is VAP, but the symptoms presented the day after receiving OPV, so it's not quite right. Am I wrong? Greetings from Ecuador. It's not. It's not. What it's is VAP, Amy? VAP. What's VAP defined as? Uh, a, a case of paralysis uh, within two months of receiving the vaccine. And you have to do you have to isolate polio from the stool, or it's not required. It's a squishy definition. So the the polio in Brazil is not likely to be VAP. It would be very unusual for it to occur within twenty with within. It would be very unusual for them to. Although I guess if it was if they were the vaccinee and got it from the vaccine, yeah, it's possible, but it would be very unusual. Very hard to identify cases of VAP, but that's too close. I think a day after receiving OPV, no, it takes exactly in, in infected people. It takes seven to fourteen days to get CNS symptoms. It can so take up that. to it can take up to three weeks. Yeah, sure. Um, what are the UTRs on the mRNA vaccine? Do you know. know? No. Good question. Let's look it up because I want to know. <laughs> so I think they are just random sequences that have been optimized for high protein production. So they take the spike ORF and they randomize the five and three prime ends 
and pull out the ones make, that make the most protein. Because in a quick search, that's what they say they did. But if you wanted to pick a really efficient 5' prime UTR, you could probably find one, right, Amy? For sure. Yeah. Good question, Luis. Just use actin. You make a ton of actin. Yeah, so I, what they actually used, let's see if I can get that information. Yeah, so it's interesting. There is a uh, optimization of non-coding regions in the COVID-2 mRNA vaccines. How interesting. This is a Dan Baruch paper, which is a different mRNA vaccine, CureVac. Um, but then there's another one where they talk about optimizing the UTR. So that's what I think happened question i like that okay i listened to who and ebola outbreak that i did not know it can lie dormant read about a nurse who got it five years later and started another outbreak yes so i was just recent too yeah so it can lie dormant for years it can lie dormant in testes or in the eyeballs as well these are immunoprivileged sites that don't have good immune clearance. Now, Emma Thompson, who was on TWIV not too long ago, she actually took care of a nurse who returned to Glasgow. She had contracted Ebola infection, and Emma treated her in Glasgow. She got better. She went home, and several months later, she came back with recurring symptoms. It was only a few months. I think it was just a few months, but that was an example of, uh, yeah, persistence. And we never thought it could do that. But it was, an, it was an example of a physician who returned from West Africa. He got sick. He was he got better. And then many months later, he developed – one of his eyes turned a different color, and he went in and he had an active Ebola infection in the vitreous humor. You know, you didn't, ad, you didn't say any advertisements today. Oh, I, di- I didn't. I know. Let's do some ads. Right now, there are two ads we have to do. The first is this one. This is this is Amy right here. See, that's her. Amy.rosenfeld.fda.hhs.gov. Amy needs a research lab technician. And I do. I interviewed somebody the other day who was not appropriate. So Amy uh, works on antiviruses, and she's discovered this amazing cross-reactivity, antigenic cross-reactivity. She wants to know what's the relevance of that to pathogenesis. So this research assistant will help her in doing that and also develop animal models for the various antiviruses so you can look at the, the relevance of cross-reactivity in infection models, all BSL-2. So if you know someone or you are someone who's interested, you need to have some uh, science education, you need to have a college degree in science, you need to have some lab experience, but here's her email, and check, shoot her an email and ask her uh, what what else th- they need to do. So that's a very huh. good opportunity, and she needs help. She needs your help. Yep. Come on down. Isn't Come on that down. what they say in the places, right? Come on down. And where's and your the, t-shirt? T-shirt, so vaccinated.us. So they have now extended this promo to through October. They have kids' T-shirts, and they have – so let's um, – oh, look at this. I have to show you this. Where is the screen share? So now they have a spike well, they shirt have Halloween for Halloween. Costume. Look at that. Cool. They have a spike T-shirt for Halloween. Um and so they have kids spike t shirt. These are kids, I guess, boys and girls. Yeah, there's a man, more boys and girls. And here let's look at the options for a boy shirt. Choose the color. Black heather, hot pink. Stop coming up. Black heather, hot pink, light blue, navy, and white. Let's see what hot pink looks. Oh, there it is down there. Hot pink. Heather cool. and very cool colors, okay? And uh, you, they have different things that you can pick, like 
Vax Gratitude and another. This one has Vax Gratitude on it, but you can get other things. Anyway, you go to your cart, and after you put your things in the cart, you use this promo code, which is um, Microbe TV. And they yeah. donate their their profits to uh, Microbe TV, and they they very they're very happy. A lot of people have bought T-shirts. It's a kind of a cool way to support us, and then you have a T-shirt at the same time. So thank you so much for your support. We need your support to do this because we don't charge anyone for our products. We want to give away education for free. I've always been a believer that education should be free, and so here's a way of me showing that. But in turn, we have to raise money to do this. So. This is one way you can help us. And you coming here tonight helps us a lot as well. We really appreciate it. Okie dokie. Uh, frequent Twiv listener post live stream question. No, you disagree with Hotez on COVID. Could you elaborate, elaborate on virological differences and what does he get wrong? Well, I can't, I can't go into everything, but COVID, uh, Hotez was big on the variants are going to kill you. It's more transmissible and more virulent than the one before, and they're going to kill you with no evidence for any of that. Wouldn't you say that was one of his issues, uh, Amy? Yes, I guess. I mean, to be honest, I stopped listening a long time ago when I thought he should have a Twitter timeout. So I don't know what he says nowadays. But, yeah, that probably was one of them. And then, of course, you know, he was involved in making this vaccine, protein-based vaccine with India to, you know, get into a lot of people, which is a good good thing. And he never tested it. He just looked to see if it made antibodies. And then he said he should get a Nobel Prize for doing that. Now, this is just the ultimate hubris. I'm sorry. You don't decide if you get a Nobel Prize. Other people do. Really? I decide if I get dinner or not. Do you want to go have dinner? Do you want to leave? No. I was, no, I was being facetious. Oh, yeah. So the twim last week, alcohol with high pH is really good. <laughs> but that's for food surfaces. It's not for your hands, right? <laughs> you don't want to put twelve pH 12 at your, on your hands. Not unless you want your hands to turn into fat droplets. Cesar says, does Paxlovid decrease chances to develop long COVID? Don't know. So apparently not according study. to the paper. What, did the paper a paper get published on this? Yeah, the two papers I sent you and Daniel. When did you send those? Today. Okay. Some Scotland thing I'm a bobber. I believe that they looked at it. Okay. Have a look at it tomorrow. But I, I don't I know. I'm sure Daniel will discuss it. Tomorrow. Okay. Well stay well, tuned, yeah, Cesar. I, for tomorrow. Yeah, that's the point of Daniel. I send papers, he reads, he discusses. I would I would say that vaccines can reduce transmission for a short window. I think so. I think in the in the few months after you first get the vaccine when antibody levels are high, they could do that, yes. But then after that, no. They won't. Would you think that a Novavax would be a better booster than mRNA or J and J? I don't see any reason to think it would be, right, Amy? Uh, it could be if the, if it led to, uh, better protein folding and better antigenicity. Yeah, it could be, but we don't know. We don't have any data on it. Well, you, we have no idea what the, what that, what the protein looks like in an mRNA vaccine, because you have no idea what cell type it's in. So you don't know that it folds a hundred percent properly in a muscle cell as it would in a lung cell. We don't do those kinds of experiments. We should, but we don't. Ayush wants to know, how is the gene for SV40 large T expressed if the mini chromosomes initiators are all coded by initiator binding proteins? Well, the, the large T is under the control of the early promoter, which is not bound by initiator binding protein. So that's why it works. If you have a COVID outbreak on a hospital floor, how do you tell if other patients have acute infections so you can tr start treatment? Just, you just give everybody Paxlovid. Yep. Yep. 
is post-nasal drip long COVID. Is yeah. that one of the symptoms of long COVID, Amy? I have post-nasal drip all the time from allergies. How could it be a symptom of long COVID? I also have post-nasal drip from a deviated septum. I'm not clear how this could be a long, symptom of long COVID. Why do you think that goes for more than, what, eight weeks, according to WHO, is long COVID? What? FDA. Well, then I must have had long COVID for the last 25 years. But you, Because I have, have, <laughs> have post-nasal drip well, you for way got, more than eight, you well, have, eight weeks. You could have acquired it from something else. That's the point. Uh, but a lot of viruses out there, Amy, not just SARS-CoV-2. Well, uh, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Un understood. Have you seen the new info about the Neanderthal allele on chromosome three that causes severity in COVID infection? So we we did this on TWIV a long time ago. Is there something new on this, Amy? Do you know about? You won the Nobel Prize. Yeah, I know for sequencing the Neanderthal genome, right? Uh huh. A Neanderthal. So this is funny because the major genetic risk factor from for severe COVID is inherited by from Neanderthal. So that was an that was an old study. It's not new, which we did on TWIV. Yes, maybe Les can look it up. Um, but yes, yeah, severe COVID uh, gene was inherited from Neanderthals. Yep. Arugula is spicy. Yeah, of course. Also called rocket greens. Okay, I didn't know that. And my grandmother used to crumble a rusk into yogurt. Why would you want a crispy biscuit to be soggy? I don't know. It's like, why would you put, like in Quebec, you know, with, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, what's the French fried di dish? Poutine. Why do you take f crispy poutines, crispy french fries, and soggy up, make them soggy with gravy? I don't get it. So Morris said, uh, Dr. Campbell, who was in it for clicks, made a video today calling Pfizer not studying transmission a breaking international scandal. Well, <clears throat> yes, he's Maybe in it for Maybe he clicks. should um, <laughs> review what, what you need to do. Maybe he should, he should review. He should compare it to other vaccines which do not inhibit transmission, so. No vaccine inhibits transmission. It can reduce it. See, we don't use the word properly. It's not inhibit, it's reduced. Yeah, I understand. I got it. But either John, either Campbell is being clickbaity or he actually doesn't know. I suspect he doesn't know because he doesn't bother to read the literature, but I don't know. Respect he doesn't know because he doesn't understand what vaccines do. Should people over 70 get an MMR, Tdap, and IPV booster due to anti vaxxers and other unvaxxed people increasing the number of cases? I would imagine if you're over 70, you've already had MMR, the disease. Most people have already had measles, mumps, and rubella as kids. Tdap you get every 10 years. IPV I don't know why booster. you would need IPV booster. I don't think so. I, I, I don't see. See, by giving know. an IPV booster, you're undermining that. It, it demonstrates that you don't have lifelong immunity, so it demonstrates that eradication is never is not a feasible thing to ascertain. So you have to decide, or is it an eradicatable disease or it's not? No, I, I think you're it's not, not eradicatable if 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 you have to get a booster when you're it, old. It is eradicable because of the lifelong immunity, but as you have said, there are too many asymptomatic infections to allow. Right, that. but that's irrelevant. I'm not discussing that. I'm just saying that if we're advocating everybody get IPV boosters, then you don't have lifelong immunity. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. I'm not arguing. I'm not disagreeing. And Lisa says, 
Since vaccines do not stop transmission, why were the COVID-19 vaccine hesitant individuals made to feel guilty that they were selfish for not thinking about protecting others? So initially, before variants began to arose, people assumed that we would get some herd immunity, some protection by immune people to restrict uh, transmission. But it turned out not to be the case. We were wrong. As soon as the immune evasive variants arose, we realized that it wouldn't it wouldn't be possible, but we just didn't know that at the onset. Well, we also didn't know what vaccines did, and many people in leadership still do not. Leadership, that's a good word. Is that like management? I guess. I don't know. You have to ask Ian. Amy says, no way, Vincent. Nobody will be here for q and I'm a hardcore participant. Thank you, Amy. Really appreciate it. I would do it for one person. For sure. Absolutely. Mm. I'm not sure. I'm getting the word out at Ohio State about TWIV. Students wanted the link. Very good. Thank you. Uh, we, well, I visited Ohio State. That was my last trip in 2020 and uh, did a podcast there. And we are going to Ohio State for ASV in a couple of years, so I'll be back. And look who's back, Amy. Jen! Jen, Amy Yay! really likes you. You can tell. So look at that. Jen's She's... here. Jen's here. She knows she got two new puppies. No, I, They're I, called I Ace and Riley, or Ridley. Ace and Ridley. She sent me a picture of one of them. The other one just runs around. She can't get pictures. But the the ace that she sent is very cute. Almost rivals Gordo cute, but not quite as cute as Gordo. <laughs> Animal party, Amy really likes you. It's okay. It's okay to say that. Well, Richard's here too. See, oh, Richard's hello, Richard. there. Good welcome. Some people we haven't seen in a while. Good, good to have you back. Mitch says in Australia, news is more people have died in 2022 than from the start of the pandemic. No five-day isolation, no restrictions. Okay, what are they dying of? Probably multiple things, right? Wouldn't an attenuated or inactivated virus vaccine be less likely than a single protein vaccine to show immune escape? How would an inactivated vaccine have immune escape? It's well, if it's a dead. whole virus, whole virus. So you have antibodies to a lot of viral proteins. It would depend on which proteins are protective, right? Antibodies or T cells against which are protective. If more than one, then I don't harder. think that this. I don't think that that's correct. What? I don't think that I don't think any of this is correct. What do you mean by this? I want you to explain what you mean by this. Okay, I don't think any of this answer is correct, and I don't think this question is correct. No, it's because a good question. It's a question. It's is actually either... not a good question. Yes, because... it is. It is. Okay, fine. It is. Right. She wants to know if a virus right, vaccine but it's with not a lot of proteins, not just one, would be less likely to have escape. That's the question. What's wrong with that question? Because it, it is irrelevant. Like, no, there's, that, when a, there's you don't decide. Drift. You cannot there's decide. An it. There's anagenic drift for Picornas, right? Yeah, there is. And it's a ten, and it occurs in Sabin, and it occurs in uh, wild type. There's an anagenic drift for measles. It occurs in the vaccine derived attenuated vac virus, and it occurs in wild type. The limitation is an immune escape. The limitation is that when if you get eight of the eight amino acid changes, you can no longer interact with the receptor. Okay, you know what? That is a great point. But you shouldn't tell Tess that her question is irrelevant. You should just say, this is why it's not a right way to look at it. And what you just said is, is absolutely correct because some viruses do undergo drift and it doesn't matter. So it's, All it's viruses far more undergo complicated. drift. We just don't, we are just, our assays are just not sensitive enough to, t to pick it up because we have this idea that you should either have a log difference in plaque assays or you should have a twofold difference in some TCID 50 or, or RNA quantitative RT PCR assay, right? And the twofold, and 
where was it that Offit said that he didn't think like a twofold difference was actually biologically Clinic, significant clinically or clinically significant. significant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. It's biologically significant, but it might not be clinically significant. Wasn't that what he said? Yeah. So, yeah. So I think this is a nuance, a very nuanced answer that Amy is giving you. And so you would think at face value, your, your question is correct, right? But, ah, sorry, I'm cramping my foot. <laughs> Are you works. even wearing shoes? Ah, I got to stand up. Holy You're not even crap. wearing shoes. So what's wrong with that? I have socks on. Give me a break. Dr. Rosen. I don't know how you get cramped in your foot without shoes on. I, I, I but probably whatever. need electrolytes. Your anyway, feet are special. Okay, it's going away. Uh, it's it's a nuanced answer to, uh, you know, Tess doesn't realize that all viruses undergo drift, but for some it doesn't matter. So this is an education moment. Don't tell her it's irrelevant. Just explain that I'm answer. I'm telling you you're irrelevant. You're, well, that's you're, fine. You're. You could call me irrelevant. You could say I'm, I, my answer is wrong. I have no problem with that. But, you know, Tess is the student here. Let's be kind. It's a good question, and you have a great answer. I totally get it. I hope Tess gets it. Uh, Ramona says, if someone experiences a COVID rebound, do they shed virus again, or is the rebound just... Here, it's his part of the question. It's just uh, an immune system issue independent of shedding. Well, I think we know. So piece by PCR, there's an increase in PCR material, right? But I don't know that someone has looked at infectivity for that rebound. So, I mean, I don't see why it couldn't simply be part of the course of infection in some people that you have an initial clearance and then replication ensues but as amy said i don't think we know yeah so peter quotes the first campaigns with nlpv2 were carried out in march 2021 as a response to outbreaks of cvdpv2 in nigeria and liberia with further countries soon following yeah so it's it's been an outbreak response as we said What do you think about the new pan coronavirus vaccines in developing, in development? <laughs> I, I don't think a lot of them. I think they're going to be very difficult to make. What do you, what do you think, Amy? Good luck to them. The only one I really like is is Pamela Bjorkman's. Okay, she is a paper published in Science this past summer. We we talked about it when she was on TWIV in the summer. And she has a unique way of putting together different spike proteins on a, on a nanoparticle. And it seems to give rise to broadly neutralizing antibodies. Whether they'll be clinically significant, we don't know. I think that has some promise. But we'll see. I don't know. I'm not clear that there isn't, like, interference or whatever. Like, when, you know, when you give monovalent Sabin, you get much better immune response than when you give trivalent. So I'm not clear that, that this is, I'm not clear that this wasn't just a fancy uh, proof of concept principle. I can make a nanoparticle that has 11,000 spikes on it. Glennis says, when you look at your viewing numbers, don't forget to count those of us who have to watch on catch up. Yeah, uh, actually we do get more than, so we have now 458 people, which is great. And then we usually get up to 10,000 views afterwards. Yeah. You bet. Have you discussed Florida not promoting mRNA vaccines? I think it came up with the heart issue up above. Yeah. They should promote them as everyone else promotes them because they work and they're safe. Florida doesn't know anything special. It is politically expedient for them to not support them because the people in charge know they will get votes by that, which is just very, very sad. Well, it's very sad for that people vote that way. Yeah. I don't get it. But then if we say this, people say we're, we're being political and they don't like it. But okay, whatever. They can do whatever they want. 
Why do some viruses cause post-viral syndromes? Is there an evolutionary benefit? What are your opinions no, on that? No, because there's no virus there. That, there's no evolutionary benefit in our... Not that we can see, right? Well, there's no virus. There's no virus. That's exactly right. So it, it is um, a consequence of an, uh, of an immune response, which may not be as, as finely tuned as it should be. Uh, what, what's her opinion on the clinical validity? Uh, we've talked about this. It's very hard to quantify, right? It clearly exists. We're, we're just a few years out now. And, you know, with time, a good fraction of cases do resolve. So the final number, how long, is not known yet. I think it's very early. You know, we're down to less than 1% in a vaccinated person. And part of that is because... As Daniel said last week, you know, many of the symptoms go away within a year. So I think you have to be very careful. And people who overstate the severity of it, and I'm, I don't doubt that some people have very severe symptoms from a long time. That's not what I'm saying. But they say, oh, it happens in half of the people. And it, it's just not fair of them to do that because we don't have the data yet. Um I, David, who had said originally not just viruses, but all types of life on Earth. Well, we we do catalog life on Earth. Do you think, Amy, we don't know a lot of thing, living things on Earth at the moment? Or do we know many species, say, of multicellular organisms? I think we probably don't. I think there's hundreds of millions of organisms in the ocean and on the floor of the oceans by the hot vents and in and by the tops of the Antarctica and stuff that we have no idea what they are. What is an unexpected discovery you've made in virology? I know what Amy's is. Why is mine? Well, you should say it. Well, when I make it, I'll say it. But since I haven't made this discovery you made, yet, you discovered unexpected. Oh, the cross-reactive, energetic. Uh, the cross even the title of the paper has unexpected in it, right? No, I don't think so. Anyway, it's in the abstract. But Amy discovered yeah. unexpected, extensive antigenic cross-reactivity among enteroviruses, and now that's what she's working on in her lab. It's very important. I think it's really great. And I have it is to say, very important. I immunized the mice for that experiment. Yeah, you did. You immunized them. lots of mice. And and Amy made immunized. the antigens, and we went over to the mouse house once a week and, either, and immunized twice. the Twice. What? We, twi we went twice, Tuesday and Friday. Twice a week? You always go twice, Tuesday and Friday. I, I made a little contribution to that exciting discovery. What did I do? Oh, so finding that a, a DNA copy of poliovirus RNA is infectious, totally unexpected. Although Amy would say you should have known it would be Vincent if you had thought about it a little better. Right, Amy? <laughs> I think I've learned Amy after 20 years. 22. It's okay. It's fast paced. Lori got Novavax in the U.S. There you go. It's possible. Right. Australia has 13 million doses of due to expire. Why is that? People don't want to take them. I'm sure there are people who would, who would want them. Well, why can't they donate? Donate to a country that doesn't have enough vaccine or go out to the aborigine population and protect them. Yeah, I think they could be used. I don't yeah. understand. I just don't understand. Uh, do you think Putin might release smallpox? I don't think so. No. He can do other things though, right? Which are more scary. I don't know. I read today that I read today that the people who are living in Ukraine are getting ready for a nuclear bomb. Not good. Disaster. Can they intercept when it? Eco I don't know anything about warfare. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, that's a big problem. Yeah, um, one man with small penis, huge ego. <laughs> Not good. 
Uh, Ian says, high titer convalescence serum uh, antibodies given early reduces progression. Yeah, but these uh, convalescent serum studies were very uneven, and monoclonals are much better. Monoclonals given early reduce progression to severe well, disease. Well, that's because they're purified. Yeah. Convalescent serum, who knows how much is in there? Although many people claimed, what was it? Casa Deval claimed you can determine. It's called doing a titer assay. Of course, you can determine. Someone said today that more people in the emergency, et cetera, were vaccinated than unvaccinated. Wouldn't that fact be that most people who are vaccinated reflect? That? Yes, of course, most people are vaccinated. So the most people who are at the drive-in movie are going to be vaccinated. Sure, absolutely. Right, Amy? Yeah, for sure. And I'm sure most people in the emergency room that were not there for COVID incidences. They were there for broken arms, heart attacks, concussions, right. severe cuts, overdoses, car accidents, blah, blah, blah. What will future topics be with Lori Garrett? Fixing the public health system. Yeah, I also wanted to talk about what's wrong with CDC. I think that should be good. I think how to have equi met, uh, health equality, how to deal with you know, the rise in infectious diseases, blah, blah, blah. How to make, get rid of lead in water and paint. Why is there lead, why is only certain cities like in Newark and Flint have these huge lead numbers? Like it's outrageous. Did you know DC has a campaign to go lead free by like 2030? No, I didn't know that. That's good. Me right? neither until I saw the poster. Yeah. That's I'm really just surprised good. it's going to take until 2030. But it's a shit show in Newark. Uh, Lisa said that I wasn't answering her question, but we did answer this. That Why? Because we thought they would stop or inhibit transmission of, by herd immunity effects, and that we turned out to be wrong. So I... I I didn't mean to. Yeah, we talked about the Israelis. What's the difference in structure between the regular coronaviruses and SARS-CoV-2 virus? They have well, different three prime ends that include more accessory genes. But the virion, the virus particle structure is very similar, right? It's envelope virus with uh, spikes yeah, it all and some other like proteins. A, it all looks like a, uh, the sun corona, yeah. That's why yeah. they're called coronas. Frank, define regular corona. OC43, HKU1, NL63 are not just regular. Well, they're common cold coronaviruses, right? Then we have we have the epidemics. We have oh, wait, SARS. there's four. There's four. Yeah, there are four common colds. 229E. 229E. Then we have MERS coronavirus. We have SARS-CoV-1 and SARS-CoV-2, the epidemic coronaviruses. Morphologically very similar. Quiv is mentioned in Washington Post comments, really, in the comments. Yeah, people do that in comment sections of newspapers, yeah. Yep. Is there any reason to believe in principle that spike protein vaccines ought to be more effective than the inactivated or attenuated vaccines? No. No, there's no reason to believe it, it is a expression. mRNA is an expression platform, right? But whether the the antigen will work for all viruses, we don't know, right? It's a nice expression platform, but we don't know. Yeah, Walter Isaacson's book mentioned Twiv in labs. That's the the the, the Jennifer Doudna biography, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, Judy Collins. Is the incubator still open for a visit? Yeah, we're open. If you want to come, email me. And um, I'm, I'm happy to uh, to have you visit. Vincent at microbe.tv. We've had a number of visitors over the summer. Gosh, you can talk to Laura and Emma about their visit. It's like two weeks ago. And, and we now have cards. And... Um, 
brochures. Did I show you the brochures, Amy? I don't have one down here in the basement, but one time I come in. When Tana come in to pick them up? I don't know. I don't think she's going to. I think that Daniel's going to take care of it. Here's the micro my microbe TV card. See, that's one side, and then the other side has my contact information. You know, it's it's Great. out of focus because this is not autofocus. Let's let's try focusing it. How about that? There you go. See that. It's good. I have a title, address, email, website, telephone. I think the other side's cool, isn't it? It's got a plaque yeah, assay. Yeah, great. Plaque assay. All right, now we have to focus Vinny. There he is. Vinny in focus. Yeah, so anytime, Vincent at microbe.tv if you want to visit. Well, let's see what else we have here. If you um, received three vaccines and had mild covid could you get a covid again with a more serious illness i don't think it would be more serious frankly now unless you have health care health conditions that would compromise your immunity in some way but not likely right amy right it's life's reflections i recall that's what song is that from it's life's reflections I recall both sides now. Joni Mitchell. Oh, wonderful song. Oh, my God. Oh, I just love Joni Mitchell. Yep. Used to make my dad play Pave Paradise. Oh, God, I love Joni Mitchell. Who knows where the time goes? This is written by Sandy Denny. I didn't know that. Thank you. Um is the main reason we need a flu vaccine every year due to the flu, hemagglutinin, and drifting? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Send in the clowns is the perfect song used to describe the anti-vaxxer pandemic crowd. Yep. Oh, a lot of song references here. Cool, very cool. If someone plans to go to a conference with thousands of people, should they get their booster? Assuming they've had three shots and in their 50s. No, I'm going to a conference. I've been to conferences with many people. I'm vaxxed three times. I don't think so unless you have comorbidities. I would say 75 and up, then do it. What do you think, Amy? Sure. Since cases of flu are on the rise, have they sequenced the strains causing the infections to see if they match the current flu vaccine? I, that's a good question. I have to look at that. I know that the uh, in the U.S. The, the numbers of cases are just starting to go up. So I don't know if we have that information yet. We're gonna. I'm gonna take a look at that. Maybe next week we can answer that for you. Uh, I often get hand warts from indoor rock climbing. What's the best way to get rid of them? Well, they're probably, I think you have to burn them off. I don't know. I don't know how to. I'm not a dermatologist, but they they're probably caused by papillomaviruses, and they periodically use, get cleared. The yeah. acid. You use an acid like Duracell to burn them off. My son used to have them on the bottom of his foot from the locker room, and his dermatologist used to use liquid nitrogen to to freeze them off. So there are multiple ways you can do that. But, okay. We have six minutes left. Let's uh, go through here. Okay, I don't understand. Help. What specific virus farting, par fighting parts of my immune system are much less effective now that I'm over 75? Well, you, uh, you don't make as many T cells as you're used to. And you need T cells to kill virus-infected cells and to help B cells to make antibodies. And so, you don't, and in particular, you don't make memory T cells and B cells. So you may have short-term immunity, say from a vaccine or an infection, but it's not going to be long-term and that's why you can get infected. So if you're over 75, you need to have a plan, get Paxlovid or monoclonal antibodies. It's Does not that make why sense? you get infected, it's why you get severe disease. Severe disease. Did I say infected? Sometimes I slip up, but you know I know better, don't you, Amy? I do. Thank you.
How about rabies? You can get a vaccine after the bite, which works because it has long enough incubation. That's right. It has a very long incubation period. And here's one for Amy. Where did the term sterilizing immunity come from? What does it I mean? I don't know. It means nothing. It means that <laughs> you're... Pre- <laughs> when you're sterilized, when you sterilize something, you are you don't have any bad components to it. You're not able to do something. Like when you are sterilized, you're not able to have a child. You prevent, you know, something from occurring. I'm not clear where that apps or where the term or when the term sterilizing immunity was first used, but I imagine it was first used in the fifties or something. But it's wrong. Yeah. The um the implication is that it completely blocks infection, but that just doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. Sorry, Vincent, there's no well, music. The other here. thing is is that it's probably based off of the fact that we just did phenotypic analysis, clinical phenotypic analysis yeah. when people did things. Uh, there's no Muzak anymore. The company changed the name to Mood. New ownership decided Muzak was used as a pejorative for bad, boring music. I guess I did use the term Muzak. I'm an old fart. Yep. I think everybody uses Muzak and Snuzak. I'm not okay with not masking as a home health hospice nurse. Many facilities, but not all in Phoenix Metro, have allowed staff to remove masks. Sadly, they still make me wear mine for now. Steve is on Kauai. Got home in time to watch live. Welcome. Watching since 2020. Took virology last fall. Thank you both. Check out Todd Rungren's. Yeah, I remember Todd. Isn't that where you're going in two weeks? No, I'm going to Hawaii. The big island where Kona is. Anybody on Kona? That's where I'm going for the Society for Leukocyte Biology meeting, doing an immune there. Do you have guests? Got two guests. Who'd you get? I don't know their names. Immunologists, you know. Did you know that MoMA has Keith Herring love boxes? Yes. Do you have one? No. Twin Daddy, I was introduced with, to Twiv with threading the needle. Any more episodes recorded on location? Now, unfortunately, that requires help. You know, we had two video guys helping us, provided by ASM. So until I raise enough money to do that, but if I could, I'd love to do that. I'd love to go on location with a crew and say, here, we're in the lab of Amy Rosenfeld at FDA. Amy, what is it you're doing right now? What are those plaques? That would be fun. Canon plaques. Eurico, thank you for your support. Hoping we'll vote the devil out of power here in 18 days. Good luck. May the force be with you. We did, right? I don't know. He seems to there. He seems to now be a three-headed monster. Uh, What's the mechanism of herpes simplex antiviral resistance? There are two kinds. There are Mutations in the gene encoding thymidine kinase, which is the target of the of uh, acyclovir, and then there are mutations in the genes encoding the DNA polymerase that uh, uh, make it uh, not able to take up the drug and cause train termination. So two different mechanisms. Antivirals lecture in my virology course. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me just do a couple more. One more here, and then we'll thank people. Um, My mom is wondering if the new fall booster is going to protect her better. She's also concerned about a new variant that will go beyond. Well, the new variant beyond, even Paul Offit said, yeah, it could happen, but we don't know. I doubt it. But uh, if your mom's over 75 and uh, has other issues, then she should get the booster. That's what Paul Offit said. Uh, Eriko said the case in Brazil is likely to be EV71. So it's just a coincidence, that yep. OPV. Yep. And Michael, thank you for your contribution. And you've asked this question. We answered it, but we thank you for your contribution. There's Amy's email to work in her lab. Yes, we need peoples. 
I mean, a lot of great, uh, a lot of good projects need to be progressed on to apply. My board um, is getting too full. A lot of more, a lot more questions. I'm sorry that we can't get to them because it's two hours. We don't want to keep our lovely moderators and Amy has to go have some dinner. I'm just seeing if there are any more contributions uh, that we need to thank here. Tanya, thank you so much for your contribution. Tanya said once a few weeks ago something I'll never forget. There are two kinds of knowledge. There's the kind you keep in your head and there's the kind you know where to look for. Both are valuable. I think this is brilliant, Tanya. Thank you so much for, for saying that. And thank you for your support of Microbe TV. Um, and as always, I am really amazed at all the questions that are left over. I appreciate it. Thanks to all the moderators tonight. We had Steph. We had uh, Vanity Nutrition. Tom, Les, we had Tom, Steph, we had and Les, Frank. And we had Frank. Thank you all for being here. Thanks, everybody, for coming tonight, asking questions. We'll be back next week. And um, meanwhile, stay safe. Thank you, Amy Rosenfeld. Yes, good. Thank you. Good talk night, everyone. You tomorrow. See you next time. I'll talk to you, Amy, tomorrow. I'll see everyone next week. Good night, folks. Good night.